Welcome to Watershed Weekly, Episode 2. Imagine for a moment that you are able to shrink down to the size of a water molecule less than a billionth of a meter in diameter, or 0.27 nanometers to be precise. You are now made up of two positively charged hydrogen atoms attracted to a negatively charged oxygen atom in a tiny force of action called a hydrogen bond. With those powerful charges radiating off of your oxygen and hydrogen atoms, your tiny water molecule is desperately clinging to other molecules, bonding you in a force called water surface tension. And it's the reason why a single drop of water contains trillions of water molecules. Welcome to this week's Watershed Weekly as we explore the journey of a single drop of water in our watershed. I'm standing at Sawmill Creek, a small stream in Haines, Alaska. I'm imagining my tiny water droplet joining this steady stream. And that makes me wonder, where did my droplet start its journey? Where will its journey end? Our water molecule began its journey billions of years ago and continues to cycle through our Earth, finding itself in many different scenarios. Today, it joined a drop of snowmelt, warmed by the sun, and started trickling downhill. It joined up with other droplets, collecting together into the main channel of Sawmill Creek, and eventually drains into the mighty Chilkat River. Chilkat River originates high in the mountains of British Columbia, fed by icy glaciers. It churns and drifts 50 miles down the Chilkat Valley, Many streams and creeks pour off of the steep mountainsides and feed into the spectacular river. On average, a water molecule will stay in a river for anywhere from a couple of weeks to several months, depending on the speed and length of the river, before it enters an ocean or larger body of water. Where our droplet entered the confluence of Sawmill Creek and the Chilkat River, it only had a short way to go before it entered the Chilkat Inlet and joined with the salty fjord, the Lynn Canal. From here, our droplet drifts along until eventually it reaches the open ocean, the Gulf of Alaska and the Pacific Ocean. Is that the end of the journey for our water molecule? Certainly not. As many of us know, water drifts through the hydrological cycle, constantly shifting places between the earth and sky. This complex cycle has no beginning or end, and many different paths for water to flow and turn. All the water on our planet, whether it is in lakes or streams, locked up in frozen glaciers, deep beneath the surface of the soil, in hidden aquifers, or drifting by in puffy clouds, it all exists in the realm we know as the hydrosphere. Of the 326 million cubic miles of water in the hydrosphere, 97% is found in the oceans. The remaining 3% is fresh water, and even the majority of that is locked away in frozen sheets of icy glaciers, or stored up tight in underground aquifers. 0.036% of the Earth's water is contained in lakes and rivers, and only 0.001% is vapor in the atmosphere. Now, imagine this. 210 cubic miles of water evaporates from the oceans every day and enters into the atmosphere. 38 cubic miles evaporates from lakes, ponds, rivers, and is transpiration from plants. With all this evaporation, it only makes sense that an equal amount condenses and falls back to Earth as precipitation. With the majority of water contained within the world's oceans, most of the water exchange occurs between oceans and sky. However, just like our journey with the droplet of water in the Sawmill Creek, some water falls to the Earth on land or ice. Now, let's imagine that our water molecule joined others and fell as snow on the Davidson Glacier. It's possible that this tiny molecule could get locked up in the glacier for hundreds of years. Or perhaps the molecule latched onto others and precipitated as rain, soaking into the ground and being picked up by the thirsty roots of a Sitka spruce tree lining the banks of the Chilkat River. It travels through the tree and transpires back into the air as vapor. There are many paths that this water molecule will travel, but it will always cycle back and forth between Earth and sky. Regardless of whether it is solid, liquid, or gas, its transitional journey is one that makes up the wonders of our watershed. Watershed Weekly is a production of Toxinic Watershed Council in Haines, Alaska. Support comes